Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Thursday, uh, June 9th, 2022. And tonight I'll be sharing true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all the episodes of the podcast along with links to social media, ways to donate, and ways to contact me at the podcast page, which is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. It's S-A-L-S-I-D-O paranormal.podbean.com Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions. Or if you have stories of uh, paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or others you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about those. And uh, we can work with whatever your schedule is to do a show, uh, or at least a recording, whatever works best for you. So I believe that covers everything. Thank you all for listening. Whether you uh, are here for the live streams, I see uh, everyone there in, in the channel. Thank you for being here. Or um, if you listen to the YouTube or podcast feeds, I appreciate everyone listening. So, um, I guess I can get right to the stories here. Um, all right. So, okay. I found the first one. There we go. Uh, this one says, I was 15. It was a week before my great, a great aunt died, but we really weren't that close. I was at my grandma's watching a movie. And my grandma was doing a Sudoku puzzle. It was 3 p.m. All of a sudden, all the windows of the house got dark. I thought, how strange. So I turned around to the window that was directly behind me. It's about six feet long. And there, the Grim Reaper was. He had the cloak. I think a scythe. It's all a little blurry to me now, what he was holding, but I remember everything else very clearly. You could see his skeletal face, and he had red eyes. He was staring right at me. It was like I was frozen. I couldn't move, nor speak. At the end of his cloak, there were six blob-like objects kind of just floating on the tail end of it and like black smoke coming off of it as he would move forward the light would flood in he slowly moved his head forward but he kept his gaze with me until his face was fully forward I asked my grandma if she saw it after he had vanished and she said, yes, what was that? And I said, I think the freaking Grim Reaper, Grandma. Yes, there's no doubt in my mind. I can't explain it. But why? Why did he come to my grandma's when it was my aunt who died a week later? Why did he keep his, keep his gaze with me? I'll never understand. Most people don't believe me. Excuse me. Most people don't believe me, and that's okay. However, I wonder about it all the time. I'm 25 now. I also have the Grim Reaper tattooed on my leg due to that unforgettable experience. But has anyone had a similar experience or have any theories? So that's where that one ends, and that is uh, quite the sighting there. Um, and I don't know what to make of that. Uh, does something like that, does a Grim Reaper figure actually exist? I don't know. Um, or is it something that looks like that that we think is that, that may be, uh, something else? Um, or is it partly something to that we've that we as um, 
as a culture and different cultures, I, th I think even have put so much thought into over the years that maybe there are some of these that are more like thought forms or tulpas, tulpas that are that appear in places. Um, so I, I, obviously, I don't know, but uh, it sounds like the writer and their grandmother saw this thing. Uh, I'm surprised there wasn't more reaction from the grandmother. I find that a little bit odd, unless there was, and the writer just didn't remember it at this point anymore. Um, you never know with these stories, especially when people are writing about years back. I think that can make it hard. Um, so, yeah, quite the story there. But, uh, let me get to the next one. And uh, we'll keep going. Let's see, okay. So this one says, My future mother-in-law likes to paint rocks and pieces of wood and write scriptures and words on them to give them as gifts. She gave me and my fiancé a piece of wood with written scripture and a rock with a flower and the word believe painted on it. We kept these items on our patio table outside. We recently moved and as we were unpacking late one night, I was out on the patio at our new apartment and she was bringing the piece of wood. When she passed the patio light, it started flickering violently and stopped after she passed by. When I saw what she was holding, I joked and said, great, you pissed off the demons. We both laughed and thought it was just coincidence. After going back inside and unpacking more, I saw her standing, looking at what she was holding, with her face flushed. I said, what? She said, the rock. I replied, Yes, what about, what about it? She said, the word, believe, it's gone. I said, what do you mean? Looking at the rock, the flower remained, but the word, believe, was completely gone, with no trace or anything of it being there. I can't explain how or what happened. So, that, another one is, uh, I can understand them being surprised by that. Sounds like, I don't even know how to describe that one. Um, some kind of manipulation of a physical object through who knows what. Sounds like the paint was just completely removed. Um... And I don't know how. I'm not really um, that well versed in what paints are made of and what they ca what can or can't remove them from things. Um, but I'm guessing if it was packed and then unpacked, unless it was packed in something that just the right thing that it interacted with. But then you would think if the paint that made that word was somehow taken off of there through a normal, natural uh, event, then the flower, which is also painted on there, would have been removed as well. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's quite the story. I don't, I don't know what to make of that one. Uh, that's, that's manipulation. I wonder if the, so I'm, I'm guessing maybe there was no, the word was painted on there, but there was no, like background painted on it, if you know what I mean, like a, a a solid color that was put on that rock, and then the word, I guess, unless there was, and that just only that one layer of paint was taken off, which would be even more amazing if if that was the case. So, uh, yeah, amazing story there. I, I, 
I wonder what um what or who was there. Uh I don't know that uh it was anything evil. Uh it is just really odd that it happened that way. Maybe that was a message. Um just who knows what it was a message what the message was exactly for sure. Or who it was from. But um but yeah, so on that story and had to share it. Um, so I'll go into the next story here. And uh, <clears throat> as usual, I have about six stories here. I have six stories here to share today. So I've got four more. This one says, So my grandma has been saying for my entire life that she sees dead family members walking through her house every single single day around the time she is going to bed or laying in bed. They don't say anything to her. They just walk by and sometimes look at her. When my dad died, she started to see him there. Same with my grandpa. Her house has always been the house where Everyone was welcome. She has taken care of a lot of people throughout her life. Just thought that could be important information to share. But does it sound like something paranormal or possibly sleep paralysis? Since she's always in bed. But would that also happen consistently for 20 years? And that's where that story ends. Um... Just kind of basing it, uh, my first responses on the questions that, th that the writer asks. They mentioned that the their grandmother would see these figures, not just while she was laying in bed, but before she got into, or as, as she was getting into bed. So, I don't know about the ones when she was laying in bed, but if she wasn't even asleep yet, and she was still getting into bed. That to me seems like there's something else going on there. Other than just sleep paralysis. Um, which is where you experience things. You see or hear things. Or even feel things. But you can't move your body. Um, except maybe your eyes. Um, so. I don't know. And then if, if those are. If that's the case with, with her seeing these figures. When she's not even asleep. And who's to say that some of these figures that she sees when she is laying down, they used to say that she's not still awake at times when she does lay down. Um, so yeah, uh, and it's really amazing in a way that it's all family members. I I I find that really uh, significant. A lot of times you hear stories about people seeing. Figures they don't recognize in a lot of places. So, um, neat story there. Doesn't sound like anyone is frightened by it, which is a good thing. So, hopefully it's just a, if anything, it's just a family that have passed on keeping an eye on things. Um, and then going from there. So... See here. Okay, I'm going to the next story. Okay. This one says My oldest brother passed away three years ago. He left behind his wife and his child. We were close, but not as much as I wished we were since we were so far apart in age. About a year ago, after he died, I'm sorry, a year or so after he died, I had a dream. I think it was a visitation. In my quote-unquote dream, he called me on the phone. I picked up and there was silence. I said, hello? A bit louder, and I heard his voice, very soft. Kind of shy and hesitant. He said my name and verified it was him. 
in my dream, I was aware this was not real because he was gone. However, I listened because I really wanted to speak to him. Both of my parents are gone too. I asked him how he, how he was. He said he felt great, better than ever. I asked how mom and dad were, and he said they were busy chatting with their friends. He laughed and said that mom was very social. He suddenly got serious and asked me to help him. I said, of course. He said he had been trying to reach his wife, but she, but she just wasn't answering. Can you please tell her I've been calling? Can you please tell her I am always with her? And I said, of course. He said he loved me and I woke up. I couldn't believe I remembered everything and how clear the message was. I called his wife and I told her my dream and what he had said, and she couldn't, she couldn't, excuse me, she couldn't even speak. Sounds like me. She cried and said, today is our anniversary. I was in shock. There was no way I could have possibly known that. So that's where that one ends. Um, the fact that, that this writer remembered the dream so well. Uh, in itself is, I think, is a, is a sign that it was something more than just a regular dream. Um, I've had a few experiences with visitations, and I can remember those better than I can most regular dreams. And um, what is, to me, maybe the most intriguing part of that story is the writer says that their brother, who had passed, said that he tried to call his wife she wasn't answering and i'm just thinking this was through dreams so i wonder how open to these things the writer and then the her, her their brother's wife how open to these things they are if there's a difference in that, that awareness or sensitivity maybe um maybe the wife couldn't answer because she just it was a dream or he couldn't even get through to the point where he uh, the dream turned into more than just a regular dream um so a lot of questions there but uh that confirmation and then that the timing of that as well uh was pretty amazing i think in that one so um just a reminder, too, for everyone, I'm always looking for stories to read on the show. And for a while now, I've been finding stories online, which I don't mind, but uh, I'm always looking for stories from people um, who send them in or want to join me on the show to talk about them. Um, so even if you don't have any to share, please feel free to share the show so that maybe someday, at some point, um, we can start getting those kind of submissions and uh, and start reading more actual submissions from people who uh, they aren't just posting on different websites. And that's not that that's a problem. I mean, I don't mind sharing stories from websites and everything. I think they're just as important, but uh, just uh, something to consider. And if you know of anyone that has any stories, maybe point them towards the show and and uh, see what they say. So, if we can, I'd appreciate that. Uh, I don't like to complain about that too much because I've heard some shows talk about how at first when they started they were in the same position that I'm at right now, but then eventually once they got bigger, I guess, they started getting so many that they never really ran out. So, not complaining really. I just, uh, it's just the, just to make the show better, I think. Um, it'd be good to have some submitted material to read. But, uh, but yeah, so I've got a couple more stories left here that I'll go through. And, uh, and then that'll be it for 
for the show. Uh, I see you there, um, Matt Co. I, I um, will definitely talk and uh, at some some later date. I don't. Uh, I usually like to schedule when I have people on the show. So uh, let's save that for uh, another time. We'll talk, like I said, here online and and uh, work that out. So thank you for responding uh, live to the in the stream here. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I got two more. I have two more stories left here to read. Let's see here. I'm trying to find. Okay, there it is. This one says, "I was driving through Valley Forge National Park one evening, and it happened to be the night of the." Super Blood Moon last year? And they have a question mark. And they say, whatever type of moon it was, it was gigantic in the sky and super bright. It was beautiful. I decided I should take a picture of it. While driving, I saw a parking area that had the gate open. So I pulled in, but stopped at the entrance because I wasn't going all the way in to the lot. It was about 9 p.m. I stopped the car and got my phone. I opened the door and stepped out to set up my shot and my camera. While I was standing next to my car and aiming my camera, I began to get an intense feeling of dread. I had every hair on the back of my neck and arms standing on uh, at attention. I started to feel as though I was being approached. I, I dreaded the thought and decided to risk a look. When I turned around, all I found was darkness. However, the feeling got worse. I actually felt like I had found the source but was unable to see it. I turned around again to face the moon and was shaking. I said into the night, I just wanted to take a picture of the moon and I'll be leaving. With that, I felt a slight reprieve, and I took two photos. I don't think either was in focus, or even what I wanted to take a picture of. I was so scared. I went snap snap, in quotation marks there, and quickly got back in the car. I shut the door, and quickly put it in reverse. No way I was driving further into the lot to turn around. I never stopped there again at night. The picture is so bad it's not even worth sharing. So that's uh sounds that sounds really intense. Um I wonder who or what was there that maybe I don't know, maybe this writer startled them. Uh or it was just they whatever was there was just didn't want anyone else around because there was no one else around and then someone showed up. It is good that at least it backed off when the person, when the writer explained what they were doing. But I don't blame them for getting out of there right away. Uh, so, and it, it, also the, the sighting of that moon, I do believe in energy can be and go between objects in the sky and the, and the planet and people and there's energy everywhere so who knows if maybe there was that that moon had something to do with that the whole event that day that night hard to say but uh, definitely possible so um i have one more story here and then that'll be it let's see here okay yeah here it is says, I suppose I'll, be, I'll, I'll begin, if I can read right, with a bit of background info. I'll try not to be too long-winded, but it's quite the experience and worth doing justice. So bear with me. A bit about me. I've had multiple paranormal encounters. Once every few years, all throughout my life, I'm currently 27, something strange and inexplicable always seems to occur when I least expect it. 
which really has much to offer in the way of rational explanation. Examples include atypical electrified, not electrified, electrical weirdness only in my presence. Inanimate objects moved out of place while alone. Multiple instances of UFO phenomena. Dream visitations by deceased relatives. And the one instance I'll share with you all here. This particular experience dates back to around five years ago and took place on a back road in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. It was sometime after dark and an ex and I were driving back to the town we lived in at the time, located a couple hours north of another major city and visiting family there from the weekend. It was a clear summer night, and there was very little traffic on the country road. The weather was nice, and we had the windows down to feel the breeze. We weren't saying much, just listening to some music or podcast or something. After seeing no one else for at least 10 to 15 minutes, we rounded the corner onto a long straightaway stretch of road about a mile long that's visible clear to the next curve in the road. As we rounded the bend, another car's headlights could be seen rounding the opposite corner coming in our direction with the high beams on bright. While most drivers tend to dim their lights when approaching oncoming traffic, this one did not. This prompted me to flash my lights to try to remind them their brights were on, which I tried multiple times to no avail. At this point, my ex and I were a bit flustered and were commenting on how obnoxiously powerful some car's headlights can be sometimes. Just ready to pass this person. Just as we came within about 10 yards from, the, from passing each other, the, light, the incoming lights shut off completely and there was nothing there no car could be seen nothing was heard wishing past us as we passed by with the windows down no taillights were seen in the real rear, rear view mirror both my ex and i went rigid and our hair stood on end she just solemnly cut off the stereo and we sat in silence for what felt like forever before verifying that the other person had seen it too and trying to make sense of it. I had little doubt of the paranormal at this point in my life, but my ex was much more skeptical. Even after this happened, albeit, albeit less than she'd been prior. Nothing much of the ordinary seemed to result from this encounter. At least not that I could directly attribute to it, but it's a vivid memory I think of often. There are other odd happenings I'd be glad to share with anyone who's, a, who's ever interested. And that has a too long didn't read. Saw oncoming bright lights from a phantom car that disappeared moments before passing me and made no sound as I passed by where I had just been with my windows down. So that's the end of that one. Um, and I don't know if that was a car or something else. It's lights. Riders seem pretty sure that it was a car. I'm guessing maybe due to the, the elevation or the height off the ground and maybe the space between the lights. But um, if the lights just vanish, then it's hard to know if it was some kind of a ghost car, as they said in the article for Phantom Car, or if it was just strange lights that were floating in the air and going in that direction, uh, almost like a car following the, the road. So um, really hard to know that for sure. But um, 
amazing story there. Um, seems like there's a lot of stories that happen on the roads. Uh, so I, I had to share that one. I may have to do a show on that someday. Stories on the road. But, uh, anyway, so that basically does it for tonight. Um, tomorrow night, I'll be sharing more paranormal news. As I do every Monday and Friday now. And uh, we'll go from there. So thank you all for listening. And I'll talk to you all tomorrow night on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Have a good night.